you know what? I should message Sally Thorne and I should be like, hey, you know what would have been real good in this book? Take into the strawberry fields. Have I talked about this? Oh my god, have I talked about this? If I have, you'll get this stupid little I'm stupid clip and then and then we'll just move on and I'll link up to you. Link up. I will link wherever to you uh, where the video is that I did talk about this in. Hey hoes, my name is May, like the month but with an E. And today is um, everything that I read in the summer. Hello, this is me, 10 seconds after making the video. Um, so I had already recorded most of the books um, that I read like on August 2nd, that's what my camera roll says, because I didn't wanna forget. I was like, I don't wanna forget by the end of August, I don't wanna forget the things I've read and I wanna have a fresh memory of what I thought about books. So if it, if it like topples between the two videos, it might, I don't know, probably not, but you know, if it does, that's why. Or if I just used older footage instead of the newer one, then you, this is here, you know why. Okay. So I'm going over every book I read in June and July, which is <laughs> seven. <laughs> I read, I read like eight books alone, like in January alone. And I've read seven books in the last two months now so that's why it's like in june i read one book and then everything else i read in july so i read six books in july and i read one book in june um so i just thought you know what at this point let's just do a summer wrap-up because <laughs> there's like no point in me just doing wrap-ups every month if i'm not really reading anything um i surprised myself in in july though i really did um i've been in a bit of a reading slump obviously but i did also start a job like my first full-time job and full-time jobs take a lot of your time because it's 40 hours a week, you know? Like, so by the time I come home, I'm tired. I've just basically, I haven't had a ton of time to read. I've been with my boyfriend a lot and he likes to annoy me constantly as soon as I open a book. So, yeah. Moving on, I've been filming three, for three minutes about nothing. So, let's move on. So, the one book that I read in June, the first book I read is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I keep wanting to say Sally Rooney not Sally Rooney, Sally Thorne. Um, this book was good. I gave it four stars, three and a half stars, something like that. This was fine. So if you don't know what this is about, because this is really fucking popular, um, if you don't know what this is about, uh, this is about a girl named Lucy and a boy named Josh. Um, they're actually a man and a woman, not a girl and a boy. We're, they're like in at work. So it's like a workplace enemies to lovers romance. Um, so it did have a really cute scene about one of them being sick and the other one taking care of them. I thought that was pretty cute. I thought that was pretty hot. Uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, it was fine. It was great. It was, it was fine. I'm so sorry. I don't see, like, I guess I don't get, like, the love and hype that everyone else has for this book. I'm just not getting it. It was good. It was, like, it was fine. Like, I, j I literally don't know what else to tell you. It was fine. Okay, like, this one was, like, meh. Okay, this is fine. It was fine. And... <laughs> So I, I don't know what else to say about it though, I guess. Like the characters were fine. It was a standard romance. Like there's nothing, although we kept being like teased with this like strawberry farm, this strawberry field and it, we never got there. Like I thought they were gonna like take a trip. They don't, they didn't. I just wanna warn you, like if you think like, oh, they're gonna go to the like strawberry fields. Cause like, oh no, they don't, they don't, they don't go there. <laughs> then, oh, I, I just saw, I like glanced and I, I know what's next. So if you follow me, on Goodreads or friend me on Goodreads, whatever, you know that it, like you might have seen my rating for this book. And I told you I would explain it in a video and here is said video explaining it. I just, I don't want anyone to come after me because we're just going. We're, I'm just gonna tell you. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I gave this 2.5 stars. I gave this, okay, so my rating system technically doesn't really have a system until like the last three numbers you know like three stars it's like it's a book that's fine two stars i didn't really like it it wasn't for me and one stars is like a problematic book that i hated you know so this got two and a half stars so it's like between like it was fine and also i just it, it just wasn't it, this book literally just wasn't for me and it wasn't because of the representation i don't that's what i'm worried about is i i don't want people to think that like i didn't like this because the main character was trans or because there was a lot of lgbtq plus characters that is not whoa did you see how fast i said that Sometimes I like watch my videos back when I edit and I'm like, girl, slow the fuck down. Uh, anyway, that is not why I dislike this book. And I don't want you to think that because I, that, I mean, that was probably like my favorite part is just how diverse it was, like in terms of LGBTQ plus representation. I loved it. But Felix as a main character was probably one of the most infuriating main characters I've read. Now, 
I read this book I, ha I don't know what is up with my hand today like why why am I doing this um so Felix as a main character I don't remember too much I read this book a little while ago um I just remember that like he just kept making some like really asshole decisions like everything he treated his friends like shit okay I'm so sorry he treated he treated his friends like absolute shit and then he's like well nobody loves me start being nicer I don't know what to tell you like <laughs> And then what was the other character's name? Ezra? It is Ezra. I thought I had a burp. I didn't. Uh, Ezra is his best friend and keeps getting in these relationships and whatever. And Felix Love has never been in love. How ironic. That that line is like the first line of the synopsis. It's said like four times in this book. Okay, I know that's such a nitpicky thing, but it was so noticeable. Like, yeah, I, we get it. Okay. But like, also, <laughs> it just seems very high school to me. And maybe that's why I was like disconnected from it a little bit is not that like I'm so far out of high school to where I'm like oh wow children but you're like 17 okay like it's okay that you've never been in love you've only been on this earth for 17 years and there's only been like what three of those years where it'd been like you know where you can form complex relationships like that to where you can say I'm in love with this person or I've, I've had my first love or something like that I mean I'd say like 14 15 is when you can kind of start developing those those complex romantic relationships and when you should start exploring that I mean I, I'm not a doctor I don't know but that's what it seems like to me okay like two 10 year olds dating is just like oh it's like cute they're kids they're dating you know so and it's the same thing with like how many middle school relationships do you know that last have last lasted okay like that that's all I'm saying okay so once you get to high school that's when you start developing those sorts of relationships so that's like three years of his life that he's been able to actually date and he's like I have never been in love okay like you have so much time and I I don't know so if you're young not not like you know young you know what I mean like if you're a teenager and you're reading this or you keep reading these books and you're like oh wow all these people are getting relationships and I'm not that's fine okay it took me until I was like out of high school and not like exiting my teenage years to find someone that I really loved you know or really love it's, we're still together we actually just passed one year happy one year Aaron you remember him he was the one who handed me books while I was blindfolded and I had to like pet them and figure out what it was yeah you guys hated that video that's the one <laughs> um <laughs> sorry that sticks in my mind okay I mean it, it so many things take time especially relationships like that and I don't want anyone to think that like oh I have to be in a relationship I'm 15 now I have to be in a relationship you don't you don't you can start exploring those things because those are things that you should explore if that's something you want I mean not like should but like if that if you want to explore romantic relationships go ahead that's your time to do it but don't think that like you have to fall in love with every person you kiss or every person you have feelings for you don't you really don't or even every like person that you're in a relationship you're I mean it's, it's a hard it's a hard fact to face but the chances of you staying together are lower than they are higher like it, it's I mean you never know what person you're gonna fall in love with and one per what person you're not and you're not gonna fall in love with every person you're you're just not and and so this whole like oh I've never been in love thing it's like you're still so young it's okay it's okay that you've never been in love um also I feel like there was like some focus on Felix like going and doing like this art thing um and it was just like such a side plot like I would have been so interested in him like oh yeah and there's a catfishing thing I don't know I don't know where this book was going I really don't there's like a whole catfishing thing so like someone posts uh pictures of Felix before he transitioned and of his dead name and um I did really appreciate it actually too I just want to put this out here the author never included Felix's dead name and I really like that for some reason like I don't know why it stood out to me so much but I really liked that that his dead name was never really said so someone posts like uh, pictures before and of dead name and blah, 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 blah. and then Felix is like oh my god who did this and so and then they're starting to like send him like really hurtful messages and everything like that and so um he's trying to like figure out who it is and he thinks it's this one person so he uh starts catfishing them and is like oh well you know trying to get them to admit that they did it and then when he realizes he didn't he continues this catfishing thing and like everyone in this book just sucked okay that's that's the end of the line that's why I gave it such a low rating everyone just sucked like literally there's not one good character in here next I finally finished the invisible life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab it is completely tabbed you can't even see it are you kidding me do you know why it's because I put I never want the tags tags tabs to stick out too far and then get like all 
bent and damaged on my shelves. So I, I just, I, but I stick them in too much. So it doesn't even look as tabbed as it is. And it's a hardcover. So like the hardcover of the book goes out farther than the tabs do anyway. Um, I, yeah, I finally finished uh, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I think I put this on a TBR in like May or April or something like that because me and couple from a couple books were supposed to be reading it together. And we did. We, I mean, we read it together. It's just we still, even like to finish the last half of the book, I think, we still haven't even talked about it or discussed it. Yeah, so I finally finished this and I settled on a 3.5 stars um, because if the... This is probably all I really need to say about it, but if the last, like, two parts of the book, like, so I guess, like, the last quarter of the book, if the last quarter of the book was any, like, if the rest of the book was like that quarter, I would have loved this, but it wasn't. It was very slow, and it was very boring, and it was very just too detailed, you know, and so I can't forgive the book for how bored I was at the beginning just because it was good at the end, um, because I really did like the ending. I did, um, I think the story itself is good. I was never, like, I don't know how to describe it because there were some points where I was like, oh, I, wa I want to DNF this. Like I really do. But I pushed through because I was reading it with couple, um, which is kind of, I'm right now I'm reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Um, it's one of the books I'm reading and I'm buddy reading it with uh, Elsa from, what the fuck is her channel name? Oh my God. The French book dreamer. Oh my God. I, I just like, I see her and I'm like, oh, Elsa. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're supposed to be buddy reading that. Uh, she's already read the whole damn thing. And then like three books on top of that. I'm still on page 100 because this thing is boring. Okay, sorry, Elsa, let me know what you thought because this thing is boring. Well, I mean, by the time this gets out, hopefully I will have read the book. We'll find out. And that's the same thing here is like, there was a lot of points where I was just bored. And I'm, I'm hoping that we finish up that video so you can really get my thoughts. Cause this, like I tabbed things that I thought would make like either good discussion points or I just wanted to tab. Um, but yeah, yeah. So this is about a, a girl named Addie who makes a deal with the devil, with the devil, <laughs> with the devil in the year 1714. And she ends up being cursed. Um, with like she is immortal but no one remembers her so she lives forever she just is never remembered so even her own family forgets her and so now 300 years later um she's learned how to like you know make her way through life um without being remembered um until someone remembers her one day and it kind of shocks her and she's like oh so they figure out like what's going on and yeah so um I heard a lot of complaints actually that uh, Henry, a lot of people said that like Henry was literally just like, oh, it's just a plot point for Addie. Like, yes, he is. That's like, <laughs> like his whole purpose is to be a plot point for Addie. Like the whole purpose of the book, I think, is finding, I don't know, finding what? What is, what are we finding? What are we finding in this book? What are we actually finding? I don't know. I'm so tired. I feel like, God, um, yeah, 3.5 stars. I don't know how else to talk about this. <sighs> In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. This is about a woman who, I was gonna say a girl, but a woman who gets an email saying she's moved out of her hometown, like she moved out senior year and she's been on her own for about 10 years, I think. She gets an email saying, come to your old best friend's hen night, which is British for bachelorette party, basically. Um, <laughs> so she's like well what the hell and then she connects with another old friend and they're like okay well if you go i'll go so they both end up going to this hen night um but then it turns out things are like a little odd you know like the party host Flo is a little strange um <laughs> she's she's a little off the walls none of these people make sense together um and there's like this whole past with the main character and her best friend and everything like that and you're trying to figure out like what happened um so yeah, I thought, I mean, it's a thriller, so I can't say too much about it without, like, spoiling anything, but, um, I thought it was good. Like, I thought it was a good story. I thought that, uh, you know, like, the, the twist was fine. I just had fun with it, you know? That's, it, it wasn't a new favorite. Like, it's not a new favorite thriller by any means or a new favorite book, but, um, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought, I thought, I thought it was good. I just, it was, it was a fine time. It was a good time. Then I read My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Khan. Braithwaite? I'm assuming. I don't know. Don't sue me. Um, <laughs> I read this in one sitting, y'all. Like, one fucking sitting. I remember I read this July 4th. What did I read? Okay, maybe I read more things in June. Oh, or maybe this is May. This is May. So I read The Wedding Date in May. And then I read a few things in June, because this is July. So this is July... So this is about a girl, or a woman, a woman, it's about a woman, okay? And her sister is a serial killer. Um, 
like she keeps killing these men that she's dating and you know claiming like oh well it was self-defense and she keeps going and helping her sister clean it up um i can't remember their names Coretti and ayula yeah so ayula is like the favorite sister so she can do no wrong and Coretti is always cleaning up her messes and always trying to like branch off on her own and find some some something for herself that isn't taken by her sister or taken over by her sister just something that doesn't involve her sister um because ayula, ayula does she's she's selfish and she takes a lot of the spotlight so um when Coretti sees that Ayula and the doctor, because, okay, so Coretti is a nurse, and so the doctor that she works closely with, she has a huge crush on. And so that doctor and Ayula start dating, and Coretti's like, well, shit, he's gonna die. <laughs> so now she's, like, stuck into this battle between, like, does she want to, like, stop their relationships? Because, like, like the, guy, the guy's gonna die, but, like, that's her, that's her sister. Like, is she like can she betray her she loves her sister um even if she does do all these awful things to her she really does love her sister at the end of the day so i thought it was really interesting it's only like 200 pages so i don't want to tell you too much because it really is just like quick get it over with like oh my god everything happens at once so like i said i read it in a day and i mean so that's one chapter yeah this is the chapter so all the chapters are like that like super short super quick um but i i really enjoyed it i thought it was fast paced i thought it was fun four stars if i didn't say that already the assassin's blade by sarah j mass um this is the novella collection it's technically like the first like you're, you're supposed to read it it takes place before throne of glass and i guess you're supposed to read it before then i'm not actually entirely sure but it's five novellas they were fine they were pretty good i gave this book four stars overall um it kind of just goes to show like throne of glass i think is just a fun series it's not going to become a favorite of by any means um but yeah it's fun because every book i've given like four stars three and a half four stars something like that okay so there's the assassin and the pirate lord the assassin and the healer the assassin and the healer the assassin in the desert the assassin in the underworld and the assassin in the empire so already we might notice two things um there's a pirate lord which means boats and a desert which means desert two things that i am pretty adamant that i do not like so if i had to rank all of these stories though the red desert comes in first i know i know guys like i i get it i understand the, the, but yeah i loved the red desert that was my favorite story um i don't know how to like explain it i guess um but selena goes to a red desert to train with like the the silent assassins i don't know it was just a good story it was a good plot um for being one of the longest short stories it was it was good it kept it was good beginning middle end done loved it um then probably i literally cannot tell you the difference between the assassin in the underworld and the assassin in the empire so i don't i don't know those were probably my least favorite so it'll probably go healer or i mean desert healer pirate lord and then underworld and empire i'll just group into one because lord i don't fucking know what the difference is i'm currently i'm probably gonna finish this today but i'm currently like a little over halfway through two can keep a secret by karen m mcmanus um i didn't know which one this was i think her covers look a little too similar so i thought this was i honestly thought this was like the second one and one of us is lying and i was like well maybe i'll try it but it's not it's it's the other one so um oh sorry this is about two twins who go back to their mom's home hometown who like they've never been there or anything um but two girls have gone missing um one of them being their aunt who they never met they were she was missing and killed and then another being um their mom's favorite babysitter's daughter and it's like a whole thing um if i it, that one happened five years before this takes place and so now homecoming is coming up again and a girl goes missing and everyone's like ah and they're trying to figure it out because of course the main character is like super into um you know mysteries and stuff like that i don't know uh these are it's fine i like this so far better than i liked one of us is lying so i i do appreciate this but i did unhaul one of us is lying not because i didn't like it like it was fine it was just like compared to other people like it, it was it just wasn't a good thriller okay like it was a fine contemporary i don't think it was a good thriller okay this is a better thriller um but karen o. mcmanus tends to like stretch things out and insanely long and uh, maybe i'm just missing the clues like maybe i need to reread it to catch some of the clues or something like that but yeah two can keep a secret by karen m mcmanus now backstory in 20 what maybe it was 2020 so i think it was last year i ended up getting rid of the book um but i read one of us is lying uh i feel bad for getting rid of it but like not really um it was just like the, the most interesting thing about one of us is lying is the title that's the most intriguing thing about it like it, it literally sounds like it'd be like the best mystery thriller kind of thing ever um it's not a thriller it's just a mystery but it sounds like it'd be like one of the best mysteries ever and it's not it's 
it's not it's not very good <laughs> I did not enjoy it um so and then like I read like truly devious so I really like was struggling with YA mysteries like I just I they just never worked for me so but this sounded interesting it was like I think I gave this like three and a half or four stars I actually really enjoyed this one um I think I gave it four um I thought this was like really honestly kind of compelling I mean it, there was times that it got kind of slow where it was like okay like I'm kind of done with like these like weird things that like don't relate to the book at all it is told in Jules perspectives too um there was one girl who was like killed five years prior I think um and the other perspective is the brother of the guy they think did it but wasn't ever arrested like there was no proof that he actually did it, it was just the boyfriend I thought this was good I thought it was good it was better than one of us is lying. I don't know what else to tell you about that. It was it was better than that. Then after this, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Hallie Jackson. And let me tell you, I want this book. I want to own it. I want to have it for like in my possession and everything. Um, and I'm definitely going to be reading the second book because this was good. I gave this four and a half out of five stars. So everyone, what everyone was saying that this is good, they weren't lying. So obviously my, my YA mystery thing is, is changing a little bit here. Um, so here we follow Pip, who is supposed to be in America. This These these people are not American. <laughs> so the author is British um, and I appreciate the effort to like make it American. It was not American. These people did not. Pippa, to begin with, Pippa is not an American name. It is so far from an American. It was like one of the least American names I've ever heard. It is so British. And uh, I mean, maybe it's not British, but it's definitely not American. So Pip is doing her senior capstone project, which I have also never heard of. So also they like said like, all right, like, all right, like I'm not British, so. It was an awful accent, but you know, they like greet each other with like, all right, we don't say that here. Um, so, <laughs> or uh, they said a bit a lot. Uh, British people say a bit constantly. Like we don't really say that here. Like, like we say like a little or some, you know, like, oh, he's, a, he's like a little scared. Not like, oh, he's a bit scared. You know what I mean? So anyway, but yeah, so she's doing her senior capstone project and she decides to do it on the murders. Murder, they claimed it to be a murder suicide. And she is trying, Pippa is convinced that the person they say killed Andy Bell is innocent. She's convinced. So she's going to try and prove this. Um, it was a little unrealistic. I mean, like probably the things that Pip did would not have gone by. I mean, like the, like people just told this like teenager all their stories, like, and she figured it out, but the cops couldn't like, I don't know. Anyway, but it was fun. Okay. I had a good time with it. There's like transcripts. There's like, I mean, it's like there's some mixed media elements in it. Um, and she also teams up with Ravi, who is the brother of the boyfriend of Andy Bell, who they said killed. So I don't know what it is, but you know, we need to get off this whole, it was the boyfriend thing. Okay. Cause clearly it wasn't, it's never the boyfriend in a book. It's never the boyfriend. His brother is Sal. That's the boyfriend's name. So they said that he killed Andy and then killed himself he was found in the woods but Andy's body has never been found so she was just declared legally dead after I think a year or something like that um so I think it's about five years later and Stevie whoa <laughs> anyway Pip uh is trying to solve now and says like oh I can figure this out um but yeah I, I can't really tell you much more than that um you know obviously but I did kind of tell you it's not the boyfriend but we knew that <laughs> I did purchase Heartstopper Volume 3. I've read all of Heartstopper that's like published right now on the app, Tapas or whatever. I've read all of it, but I'm slowly collecting the books and this is the latest one that is out in the US. So I bought it and then I had to reread it, obviously, obviously. So five out of five stars, I don't need to tell you much more, but yeah, okay. <laughs> this is probably like, honestly, this is gonna sound so bad because I gave it five stars, but this is probably my least favorite out of all of them. Um, but trigger warnings uh, for this one because it does definitely delve deeper into uh, mental health and like mental health problems. Um, and then especially the fourth one definitely does. So, and so I'm excited for number five. I know Alice Oseman is taking a break because they're making a TV show, guys. They're making a TV show. And have you seen the cast? Have you seen the cast? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I read Sadie by Courtney Summers. <laughs> so this has been a... Did you just fart? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> this has been a YouTube favorite, like an online favorite for like the longest time. Um, and I, I wasn't interested in reading it at first or like the interest was there, but I wasn't like rushing to the store to grab it. 
but you know I saw it and I was like you know what why not why not just just take it um I wondered why it took me so long to read but when I look at it like this is a, lot, this is a lot of small text um the only things that helped <laughs> speed it up um is that there's like podcast in it so yeah basically this is about um so it's it, it's like a pod it is a podcast um called the girls and it taught I don't know why I said this the girls the girls this guy who reports uh who reported on the disappearance and murder of well the murder of a girl named Maddie <laughs> um so she was murdered and then her sister Sadie went like she disappeared like a few months later so you're following kind of like dual timelines you're following present day the podcast and then you're following Sadie um so the podcast kind of follows Sadie and you kind of see where she went um and it turns out that she had gone to try and avenge like get revenge I guess avenge uh, her sister because she was gonna kill, go kill her sister's murderer there is everything I read though that you have missed um I, I gave Sadie four out of five stars I don't know if I said that but I gave it four out of five let me know what you read in the summer I'm sure I will try and make a fall TBR don't probably won't stick to it but we'll see so okay bye